A very good morning and happy Sabbath to all of you. The talk for today is understanding the purpose of our existence. Do we need to know why we exist? You know, when we know the reason and purpose for our existence, that becomes a destination, a goal for us. So, this is a topic that I often like to take because it gave me clarity in my life as to where I should reach. Why did God create me? That's the question that we're going to answer today. There are three questions that every man should answer. Number one, where did my, I come from? What is my origin? And I'm not talking about our parents. Where did man come from? Number two, what is the end of man, of the human race? What is our destiny? And number three, based on these two questions, what should I do today? What should I do today? So what are the three questions? Number one, where did I come from? Number two, where am I going? And number three, what should I do today? If I have come from here and if I'm going to go there, what should I do today in my life? So the origin, the purpose of our existence, the purpose for which we are created is a very important question that every man should answer. Let's look at a Bible verse. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Genesis 1.26. Genesis 1.26, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Which means, you and me were created by an intelligent God in his likeness in his likeness God created man whenever something is created it is always created with a purpose let us take the example of a mobile phone or a car or a ceiling fan anything in this world that has been created is created with a purpose. So it stands to reason that you and me are also created with a purpose. The question is, what is that purpose? What is that purpose? The mobile phone is created with a purpose for communication. The car has been created for transportation. In likewise, what is the purpose of my creation. Why did God create me? Why did God create you? That's the answer that we're going to answer from the Bible today. You know, the, cre the purpose of creating man is very special. God created man because we were needed. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalms 8. Five. It reads, For thou hast made man a little lower than angels and crowned him with glory and honor. What is that? Man has been created a little lower than angels. My friends, how different it is from the way the world understands the origin of man. Where we are taught today that man is a little above animals. That's not true. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says we were created a little lower than angels. Isaiah 43 7 has another very interesting understanding. It says here, every one that is called by my name for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Talking about man, God says, I have created man for my 
glory. That's what the Bible says. In these two verses, a little lower than angels, I have created man for my glory. That means we have been created for the glory of God. But the question is, what is glory? You see, if you don't understand clearly, clearly what glory means, then we would not still understand why has God created us. God has created you and me for his glory. So the next question that we need to answer to get a better understanding is what is glory? What is glory? Many people think glory means light. They think thunder and lightning and exhibition of God's awesome power. That is glory. That's what many people think. But the Bible has to answer that question. Let's turn our Bibles to Exodus 33 chapter 17 and it reads, And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by my name. So you, we see a conversation between Moses and God. And God asks the question that you and I want to be answered today. And in verse 33, 18, he says, Moses asked this question. He said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Moses is asking God to show him his glory. What does God do? Does he show Moses thunder, lightning and an exhibition of his power? That's not what he said. Moses is shown something different and it says here in verse 17, And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by my name. And he said unto, and he said, Beseech thee, show me thy glory. And the answer to that question, God gives in the next verse and he said I will make all my goodness pass before thee I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy what does God show what does God show Moses he shows his goodness and he says, I will proclaim my name. He says, I will show my grace. He, so, he says, he shows us his mercy. And continuing in verse, the next chapter, verse um, 5, that, verse, chapter 34 and verse 5, it says, And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed, passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty. Meaning, you would expect God to show something spectacular. But what God shows is His goodness, His mercy, His long-suffering, and His name, His truth, and uh, all these characteristics. God shows me Moses and says, that is my glory. So my glory, God says, is not in this power that I can make all these things and I can change all these things and I can, I can destroy all these things. But my glory is my character. So in these verses, we understand glory means character. Character. So coming back, why did God create man? God has created man for his glory. What does glory mean? Glory means character. 
So God has created you and me to reflect his character. That's why we have the verse that let us make man in our own image. What is an image? Image is a reflection. Image is a reflection. So you and me are created to reflect the character of God. My friends, that should be our purpose of our life. If I have a mobile phone, the mobile phone is created to, for communication. And the utility, the usefulness, the productivity of this mobile phone is best when it is utilized for the purpose for which it is created. That is for communication. My friends, you and me, we are created to reflect the character of God. Our usefulness, our productivity, our happiness all depends on our ability to fulfill that purpose which is to reflect the character of our Creator. And that's the question that we need to ask ourselves today. If I am created for the glory of my Maker, which is to reflect His character, am I doing that today? Am I fulfilling that purpose today? Because my friends, you can use the human body for any other thing and remain unhappy and miserable. Why are we unhappy today? Why are we miserable today? And we are trying to fill these things with, with, with things that are tangible, that are visible, and we cannot fulfill that purpose. We need to go to our Creator to fulfill the purpose of our, of our Creator. So, let us look at four characteristics of God that we need to reflect in order for us to be happy, in order for us to fulfill the purpose of our creation, the purpose of our existence. Number one, we find this in 1 John 4, 8. It's a very popular verse. We all know this. It says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. God is love. If God is love and he has made us to reflect his character, then we also have to be love. I'm sure you will agree with that. The happiest person is the person who is able to love. We all want love. We are willing to receive love. But are we able to love? What is the meaning of love? Love means to give, to give. That's what love means. You know, in John 3, 16, we have that popular verse, For God so loved the world that he gave. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Love means to give your only begotten son. That's, that's what God did for you and me. And that's what he expects from us to give others. There is happiness. There is joy. There is contentment when we are willing to give ourselves, our time, our money, to share with those who are less fortunate, my friends. Love means to give. If God has loved us, we have to love others as well. And there are two things that explain where this love is. We find this in Matthew 5, 43. Mark 12, 31. I'm sorry. Mark 12, 31. We see. No, before that. So I'm sorry. Mark 12, 30. And it says, Thou shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, 
and with all thy mind and with all thy strength and this is the first commandment what is that it's not to be loved but to love the first commandment is to love god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind and with all your strength that's the question that we have today am i able to love god with all my heart with all my soul with all my strength with all my mind and number two the next verse which also reads and thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself and this is the second commandment there are none other commandment greater than this jesus says this so love means to able to give to be willing to sacrifice to be willing to share even if that's the only one thing i have i should be willing to share that are you willing to give to share to god what you have in your life it might be something that is um, um, not accepted or you don't think much of it but when we share it we can find contentment and happiness do you love like god loves because you have been created to reflect his character so love your god and there there is there's another thing that we need to understand also uh, matthew 5 43 reads yet we have heard that it has been said thou shall love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy but i say unto you jesus said love your enemies bless them that curse you do good to them that hurt you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you so god is asking us not only to love god with all our heart not only to love our neighbors as ourselves but even love our enemies any means bl- bless those them that curse you that persecute you bless those those people who may never return that love you know it is very easy to love those people who love us back but christianity is about loving those people who may not return that love that's what jesus did for this human race and we as his followers should be able to do that as well to love others without expecting in return my friends these are the keys to happiness if we want to be happy we should fulfill the purpose of our creation and that is to reflect the character of god first of which is love love god love our neighbors and even love our enemies what else what else in first peter 1:16 we see because it is written be he holy for i am holy we serve a holy god his character is a holy god and it says here be ye holy for i am holy this is a repeat of an old old testament verse and god expects us to reflect you see the principle of reflection in this verse you be holy because i am holy god says so we are expected to live a holy sanctified life that is the purpose of our creation to live a holy life what else in then in another verse we see in first john 3 3 and every man that had this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure here again you see the principle of reflection even as god is pure we are to be pure pure means is not talking about a physical purity but spiritual purity we have a lot of impurities in our life today we lust 
we are greedy, we are envious, we are angry, there's hate, we gossip and do all these things in our life. God says these things, these impure things should not be in your life. And God wants us to have pure minds, pure hearts, pure motives. That's how we can reflect his character. Number four, we see in Matthew 5, 48, it reads, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. God is perfect in whatever things that he do, he does. And he expects that from you and me as well. And perfection means not that we have to have the best looking and you know living up to the light that we have received a baby can be perfect a little kitten can be perfect in the sphere of what it can do similarly as we grow spiritually when we live up when we know this is right and we do it we are perfect in that sphere. And that's moral perfection that God requires from each one of us. Each one of us. You know what happens, my friends? God wants us to reflect his character. To be loving and lovable. To be pure. To be perfect. And to be holy. And this is the question, am I having these characteristics in my life today? If I don't have these, then am I fulfilling the purpose for which I have been created? That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. You know, what is the opposite of this before we close? What is the opposite of all this thing? Opposite of love is? It's not hate. Love, opposite of love, because we said love is to give. Opposite of love is selfishness, is to take, it's to get continuously. I want, I want, and I want. Everyone needs to pay attention to me. I want my way. Everyone has to listen to me. That is the opposite of love. That is called selfishness. What is the opposite of holiness? It is sinfulness to practice sin, to go against the will of God, to transgress the way, will of God, to know that this is right and still not do it. What is the opposite of purity? As we already said, it is immorality. To think evil, to speak evil, to conceive evil, to dwell on things and cherish things that are not right. That is an impure life. And what is perfection? When we do not live up to the light that we have received. When we do what we like. When we know that something is right and we don't do it. It is an imperfect life. My friends, where are we today? We need to reflect the character of God. Where is the character? It's in the mind. What influences character? Our eyes, our ears, what we see and what we hear affects our mind and our character, affects our mind and character. My friends, are we going to do, start doing, recognizing what is the character of God? Every action, every thought, every word has to be fil filtered with this thought. Am I fulfilling the purpose of my creation? Because my friends, when you do that, when I do that, we will find true happiness in our lives. We will find true happiness in our lives. God wants us to be loving and lovable Christians. God wants us to live holy lives. God wants to live perfect lives and God wants us to live pure lives, pure lives. I hope 
it is your desire today to walk after the ways of God. Not allow, don't allow yourself to see those things that are evil. You know, you have heard the statement, by beholding we become changed. Let us not see those things that are not right, that are impure, that are unholy, that are evil, that are selfish. Let us not hear those things. Let's dwell on the word of God. You know, the, the psalmist says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I have, that I may not sin against thee. Let this be your experience and my experience that we can reflect the character of God and fulfill the purpose of our creation and find true happiness in our lives. May this be your experience and mine. May God bless each one of you.